I don't know who, whose brilliant idea it was to make me talk after a beer, but I'll give it a try. <laughs> I'm Monica Munoz Torres from Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. I am a staff scientist there and the lead curator at uh, BBOP, the Berkeley Bioinformatics Open Source Project. I'm also the manager for a project called Apollo. And I hope I can take uh, you through a very fast tour of my, um, uh, uh, an idea that I had. I'm very thankful to the reviewers for BOSC for inviting me to talk about my idea here. It's a little bit more on the community cultivating side than it is technical. Um, so I'll talk about Apollo curation communities, but to do this, I'll talk about curation first, to bring everybody to the same idea of what I mean when I'm talking about curation. In this sense, I'm talking about refining the structure of the genes and refining, uh, associating genes and, and functions. And so it, for everyone in this room, I am sure it is not a secret that you can unlock all sorts of important data from your genome. In this image, I'm simply uh, alluding to the fact that you can get information anywhere between, from the GC composition of your genome to getting inf very detailed information regarding the complement of genes that you have for your species of interest and how you can compare that across phylogenetic distances to other organisms of interest, as well as associating these genes <laughs> that you predict to their uh, metabolic membership and, and just functions in general, and ultimately trying to understand how your organism of interest is similar or different from those that are uh, closely related. And, and so this activity of going and refining the gene structures and associating uh, gene structures with functions through literature or experimental data is what we define in this case as curation. And the process of curation helps us to improve the quality of the annotations. Uh, it allows us to make accurate orthology assessments, to identify novel genes for that one particular species, as well as to look at uh, expanded and contracted gene families, among other things. So this is uh, what I hope that it can bring, uh, I can bring you into a perspective of what I am talking about when I say curation. So to talk about Apollo curation communities, I also need to explain a little bit about Apollo. So I'll be very brief in telling you about Apollo. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a, uh, we call it a pioneering multi-user graphical web application. It allows user to look at gene structures these, this is a predicted gene in one of the predicted sets, um, and, this are, and these are, this is the area where annotators can drag information or drag any of these structures and edit them according to the experimental evidence available. So it's basically a scrollable map of the chromosomes of the genome, however it, is, it has been assembled. And it allows you to mark up specific areas of the genome that you're interested in according to either experimental data such as reads from RNA-seq experiments or aligned gene models from other species. And, and so, Curators can go and look at these particular structures and modify them according to what the data says so that they can either uh, change structures that have been predicted or, or simply let them go. Uh, we, I think about it as kind of a social network for curators uh, where the social objects are the genomes <laughs> and its annotations. And that's why it's important for me to highlight that uh, I can be working in California and my colleague Scott can be in Hong Kong and we can both look at the same uh, at the same gene structures at the same location. And this can happen to, or more curators can be looking at the same location, so it allows you to look into real time uh, what's happening with the gene structure that you're analyzing. And everything is being saved automatically to a database so that it is accessible to everyone as well. To be a little bit more in the woods of the technical aspects, this is what the architecture looks like. Three main components. The client, uh, which is where the curators interact with the browser. This is a plugin that sits on top of the popular JBrowse genome browser. So for many of you who have used JBrowse but not Apollo, it'll be still very familiar. The plugin sits on top of it and allows uh, certain editing functions. It communicates with a 
with an annotation editing engine and as well has a component of uh, a server side data service uh, that allows us to save everything and to query as well the database. Uh, there are some components that are customizable uh, such as the database and the type of uh, database and data store that you use as well as a file system that you use to access JBrowse. Um, and uh, this is a in the past 11 months since we last saw each other, this hasn't changed much, much, but what has changed is some improvements to the web services API. And this allows people to, the, the administrators or curators to do programmatic curation. So you can actually talk directly via the API to run the annotation engine by adding or editing transcripts and metadata, as well as managing organisms or, or do bulk imports and exports of the data. Um, as well, because we have a completely exposed uh, API, we're now able to integrate with other workflows and, and tools. And so we have, uh, in collaboration with many of our researchers, and now we'll be talking about that in a second, we have uh, created Docker images that allow us to either directly talk to Apollo or via uh, Docker Compose talk to uh, bring Apollo up into Galaxy. Other groups such as the I5K workspace at the National Agricultural Library in the United States Department of Agriculture are also using Apollo via the Web Services API as well as the Gensas and Triple group. Um, we hope, you know, we, we've, we've created this environment that allows two or more curators to work simultaneously into the same place. And, and it also has enhancements such as the management of ontology, such as the sequence ontology and the gene ontology in order to manage all of those data, allowing users to refine these gene models and, and to be able to handle, we, we hope that we're allowing users to handle more genomes uh, per server. If eventually we want to be able to provide the data for everyone to be able to use their genomes to inform other genomes and all of the other genomes to inform, uh, to inform theirs. So what I came here to say is uh, that, I, that we have been working very uh, eagerly into cultivating these communities and we have had an unexpected outcome out of, out of all of this. So w over the past three years, I've trained more than a thousand researchers and this has happened in approximately in more than 50 training sessions that have happened either in person, the majority of them because of, I attend conferences and meetings and create satellite workshops around visits to universities and other research institutions. Uh, also, we've done, uh, I've done a fair amount of them via webinars and perhaps some of you have actually attended some of those. And I do my best to keep the community engaged through the mailing list and issue trackers as many of you do as well. As a result of this engagement of the community, we've come from, uh, this is a non-to-scale time <laughs> movement here, but in 2013 when we first, when we last released our desktop versions, we had a, an account of about 180 downloads from 140 uh, unique IPs. And after we released our second version, which is the uh, web-based version as well, but with improved architecture, we've had in the past six months solely about 22,000 sessions with uh, more than 5,000 total users. So in the past six months, approximately 1,200 unique users have been using the, the tool. And this amounts to about 150 servers globally, uh, which includes, uh, I mean, I, I say this in quotations with the servers uh, because one server can have several different organisms. And so there may be more than 150 organisms that are being annotated. And we, I truly believe that the curation improves when there is dialogue within and between communities as well. I have highlighted here some of the communities that we are working with, like the Center for Phage Technology at the Texas A&M University, the Bioinformatics Platform for Agroecosystem Arthropods in INRA, in Rennes, uh, as well as several other institutions. And many of these institutions have actually begun to contribute back, in addition to hosting Apollo instances and having uh, Gene Boris, where they do all of this curation together, they've also started to contribute a few technical um, inputs for our project as well. For instance, um, the I5K workspace at the National Agricultural Library has been contributing uh, to our repository to improve on the way in which you can use BLAST interface to enter into Apollo, as well as the very delicate subject of bringing all of these manual annotations and merge them with the, with the predicted genes to create an official gene set. Um, in 
the, our collaborator at the Center for Phage Technology at TAMU has, was actually Eric Rash. He was the person in, in charge of creating the Docker images and eventually uh, access the Galaxy integration for us. So many of these collaborators have actually brought a lot to the table and have helped us improve the workflows and, and improve the tool for our community. Uh, some of you are here, the Wikidata team and Wikigenomes actually helped us as well, uh, integrated into Wikigenomes as well as hosted one of our, uh, our hackathons. And uh, there has also been some uh, improvements to the API by the Monarch Initiative people and uh, a few other of our collaborators. The ones that I have uh, highlighted with the lightning bolt are ones that have been actually working with us for more than two years. And again, this is, we're not paying anyone to do this. This is just from, from their own, um, from their own ideas. So to make a, to set an example of how our collaborators have been working with us and what they have been contributing, I am giving one example of someone who's done about 30 commits on, uh, on our main branch and about 60 commits to another, the Apollo Docker repository. And uh, in the vicinity of 80 issues that have been raised, most of which have been closed. So if I were to magically be paid as much as my male colleagues, which I'm not, and if I calculate uh, more or less what an hour of that time would be uh, in, this, in this case, counting how long it takes, you know, being conservative about how much it takes for you to do a commit and how much it takes for you to respond to the issues. We're talking about in the past 20 months, approximately 10,000 uh, US dollars in, in time that has been contributed from the community. And that's just one of the people that have contributed from the community. Um, so we think you know, a portion of our, our target community is actually not only interested in using Apollo as a way of improving their, their annotations via manual curation, but also they've actually, in addition to the research objectives, are choosing to prioritize in investing their resources to achieve these goals by uh, returning a little bit of technical dividends to us. And in our efforts uh, to support the curators with this open source, community-based bioinformatics tool have resulted in, in contributions from the community. Um, this not only supports our mission, but it also improves the workflow for our community of users. And so we are very thankful to think about my presentation also as a thank you note to those of you who are uh, returning these technical dividends to us. And, and we welcome your contributions, both from the curation aspect as well as uh, from the technical aspects. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. As I said, I'm Moni Munoz Torres from Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory at Berkeley Bioinformatics Open Source Projects, working with Chris Mungle and Susanna Lewis. Nathan Don is the lead uh, developer on the Apollo project. I'm the manager for the project. And we have a lot of collaborators, many of who are here. And I just want to thank you for your continued uh, contributions to our project. Thank you. Thank you.